Well, welcome to Epic Live Church. Hey, this is our first. We're going to probably have some little technical difficulties, and the sound guys just love us through it because this is the first time we've ever had to do something like this. One of the great things about COVID-19, if you can find anything in that, is that it's really challenging the church on how we not only present the gospel, but how we get to take care of one another. Amen? Amen. So what we're going to do today, man, we've got a great day. Here's really what's cool is that if you have your cell phone, which I believe everybody here has one, is go ahead and open up your, your app and download the YouVersion Bible app. That's powerful because in that YouVersion Bible app, since you're right here on location, you go down to the events tab, click open the events tab. It's the three lines down there on the right hand of the screen. It'll pop open and you'll see Epic Life Church. When you click on that, you'll be able to follow along with our message. That's also where our prayer request will be, so your communication card. Let us know that you are here. By going to that app, click on the communication card, fill it out, it takes two seconds. Let us know that you are here. Let us know that you were a part of really a main event, man, for ELC. We plan on doing more of this um, throughout the coming time, depending on how long this COVID-19 lasts and the separation. It is so good to see all of you. So go ahead and follow us along with that. You can also give through, our, uh, through that app, or you can go to the church center. Uh, app. It's called Church Center. Open it up. Fill it out. You guys can do, uh, give there. You can go to epiclifetail.com. You can keep us connected through our website as well. I am very, very excited. These guys behind me and so many people around us have been working so hard to make this happen for you. And we love you. We've been praying for you. We've been uh, interceding for you. We believe, man, that God is using this where we can, the world can look at it and go, man, this is a really bad time in our life. But I believe God is using this, man, to draw the body of Christ closer than we've ever been before. I really believe that, man. And so, man, that's where we're at. Amen? Right on. You guys can give me a little honk when you love something that we talk about. Amen. Okay, what that was? Is that a horn? Hey, God. <laughs> if y'all don't know this beautiful woman beside me, is Miss Robin. She is our first lady. And she has had to put up with me when you didn't have to. And uh, we're going to worship uh, some more. You can stand in front of your car, but we ask you to try to stay in your car. The restrooms are open, but we ask this one person at a time go if you need to go. Um, but uh, just enjoy worship with us. And uh, however you do with your family, we're going to take communion at the end of the message. So don't go anywhere. We're going to do that together as a church. Uh, we've got people that will hand it out. If you have a question or something happens, we've got these people in the best. Go ahead and wave one of them down, okay? But let's all, however you're going to worship, whether it's sitting in your car or standing beside your car, let's enter into a place. Because you're not here to see the worship team. You're not here to see me and Robin. We're here to give God glory in this time that we're here today. Amen? Amen. Let's worship you together. I love you. God bless you. I'll be back in a little bit. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? You know, till I Jesus, too loud. 
never done before. Now some of you guys are essential and you look kind of business as usual for a lot of you, but really for the most of us, man, life has changed. And here's what I believe as your pastor, I don't think life's going to go back to being just like it always was. I really don't believe that. And I don't think the church is going to go back to the way it used to be. But uh, we've been studying, you've joined us. If you're new here today, I can't wait, I'm so glad that you're here because you're joining us in the middle of a series that we've called, uh, really we're just studying a book called the book of Ephesians. And I'm not going to go into great detail about it today, but what I am going to do is I'm going to talk about this message, and I do want to look at the book of Ephesians to start us off, because it's, it's a great passage of Scripture. The last couple of weeks, we've been a week, uh, we've been in uh, chapters 1, today we're in chapter 2 of the book of Ephesians. So if you're following along on that YouVersion Bible app, or if you have a Bible, go ahead and turn there and look at Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to read it for you, and, uh, and this is what it says. This is going to be good. It says, And he made, he and you, he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which he once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we also once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and of our mind. And were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. In other words, just like they were, that's the way we used to be before God made us alive. In verse 4 it says, but God, say but God. Amen, somebody listening. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Somebody say Amen. That means it wasn't by anything that you could have done, but it was by His grace, His ability that He brought you in and, and, and made you alive in Christ. In verse 6 it says, And raised us up together and made us, made us to sit together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Verse 7, That in the age to come He might show the exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness towards us in Christ. And basically what all that says is that God's seen us in a messed up state. Every one of us. We were jacked up. Messed up. Couldn't do anything to regain a relationship back with our Heavenly Father. Because see, here's the deal. When it says that you were dead, it doesn't mean that you were physically dead. It means that you were eternally separated from our Heavenly Father. In other words, if you were to die or I was to die before Christ, we would have all went to hell. But the Bible says, man, that God made a way. By grace you have been saved. His unmerited favor, He looked upon you and He said, you can't do it on your own merit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send another, Christ Jesus. And He will take the penalty of your sin and everything that you did right or wrong in your own works. And He'll die upon this thing that we call the cross. But here's the cool thing about this. This cross won't keep Him down. I said, this won't keep Him dead. This won't keep Him down. We'll be made alive because He was alive. The grave is empty. The cross is empty. And now we have full access to the Heavenly Father. You have access to God, the one that created the universe. You now have free access to Him. Isn't that amazing? Good home. Come on. All right. So when I'm reading this and I'm thinking about the resurrection today, because that's really what we're doing, is we're coming together not to hear Pastor Mike, but to celebrate this. And when I think about this, it reminds me of a couple of things that we need to take into account when we think about this day. 
the first thing that you need to take into account and that I want you to do when you think about the resurrection, when you think about what's going on today, maybe you're meeting with family, maybe you're going to have a picnic afterwards or a dinner, you're going to hide Easter eggs and all this other stuff. The one thing I want you to remember is this. We need to embrace the cross. We need to embrace the cross. Well, Pastor Mike, what do you mean by embrace the cross? Well, I'm glad you asked. See, I'm not a big fan. You won't hear me talk a lot about Easter, the holiday Easter. I'm not a real big fan of Easter. I did. I, I mean, I went over with my grandbabies and we did the Easter egg thing, and, but I'm not a big fan of it. In other words, I don't talk a lot about that. I, on this day, I don't really like to talk a lot about Easter. Because I want to embrace the cross. I want to embrace the resurrection and what it means for me in my life. You see, I was one of those guys. I was broken. I was busted. I was hellbound. I had every reason for God's judgment to be on me. But because He did this on this cross, I don't have to worry about that stuff no more, man. And so my dad, I want you to embrace the cross. What does that mean? Well, the word embrace is an interesting word. The word embrace means, uh, let me go, it means to accept or support. It's a belief, theory, or a change. Willingly and enthusiastically. So to embrace it means that we willingly, enthusiastically, we embrace what Jesus Christ did on this thing. And not just on one day a week or one day a year, but every day of our life. That we embrace this above everything. That our desire is for what He wants in our life. Because He has a better plan and a better purpose than you could ever imagine. See, it's not about keeping a set of rules and regulation and doing this or doing that. It's about understanding what Jesus did. And we get to embrace the sacrifice that He made on this cross. And we embrace it. Not because we get something from it, but because, man, it puts us into a place of, with, with God in heaven. It makes us right with Him. And we all need a little bit of that in times like this. Our passages in, in Ephesians is a great reminder of this. Jesus made us alive. This is not a physical but spiritual, you and I were dead. This is what it makes. This is really what makes a Christian a Christian. You're not a Christian because you come to Epic Life Church, or because you knew the songs. That doesn't make you a believer. What makes us a believer is what happened on this thing, and not just believing what happened, not just seeing what happened, but accepting what happened on this thing. That a man died, a man just like you and me but was sent down from the Father to take upon our weight of sin that we no longer have to carry. That's good news for me. I hope it's good news for you. In the book of Galatians, in Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, it says it like this, There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all made one in Christ Jesus. Because of what this thing did, it makes all of us on equal ground worldwide. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave us Jesus Christ, that whomever believes upon Him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. It's equal footing. It doesn't matter how wealthy you are, how poor you are, how, how broken you are, or how much put together you think you are. We're on equal footing when it comes to the cross. So I want you to embrace the cross enthusiastically say, man, this is what we're celebrating today. Yeah, it's great that you're getting with your family. I love that. I love hanging out with our family. I love my grandbabies. But it's something deeper and it's something bigger when it comes to this thing that we call the cross. So we want, I want you to embrace it today. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to remember it always. Don't just do it today. Remember the cross always. Remember the sacrifice that was given for you so that you can live out the life that God has created for you to live. And what's crazy about this, this is the thing that blows my mind, right? Is that, is that God foreknew this would happen when He created the world. You were on His mind, you were in His thoughts when God created and established this world that we currently live in. As a matter of fact, God knew that today most people would be in their homes locked down. He knew it. And yet He provides a way for us to live out the life we were created to live still in Jesus Christ. You have not been left alone. He has not abandoned you. So what do we do? We remember it. We don't just remember it on Sunday. We don't just remember it, man, on Easter or Christmas. We remember this cross every day of our life. Because many of you are like me. You had addictions or you had issues going on in your life and you needed someone or something greater than you 
to bring you back into the life that God created for you to live. We're all there. And we remember this daily. Every morning we should wake up and remember the sacrifice that was given to us on the cross. That's why we hear things called Passover. How many of you ever heard of Passover? We're celebrating it right now. I think we're in day, we've got about two more days, three more days of it. Uh, interesting enough that Passover this year fell on Good Friday. I mean, that doesn't happen very often. There was only one other time in the history of the world where everyone was on lockdown when the Passover happened. And it's the original time that it happened. It was the original time when the nation of Israel was in captivity and they were slaves and they were in bondage. And a guy named Moses comes on the scene and God commands Moses to tell all the people to lock themselves in their home tonight. For tonight, death is going to come by. And every door that is not covered by the blood of a lamb, unblemished, without spot or wrinkle, I will kill the firstborn child. Well, here's the amazing thing about it. On this Passover that we celebrate, God sent us the unblemished lamb named Jesus Christ. And His blood now washes away our sin, but it has to cover the doorpost of our heart. Matter of fact, in the book of Exodus, chapter 13, what you'll see is there's a commandment by God given to the Jewish people to remember the Passover. What will you do to remember your Passover? When God passed over your house and redeemed your life and gave you life for death. Because that's what we're doing today. We're remembering. But if you look in the book of Exodus... Chapter 12, this is what it says. Whoop. No, that's not what he says. Let me go back here. <laughs> Exodus chapter 12, verses 25 through 27. It will come to pass when you come into the land, the land that he promised you, which the Lord will give you, just as he promised that you shall keep this service. What service? The Passover service. Watch verse 26. And it shall be when your children say to you, what do you mean by this service? And they shall say, it is the Passover sacrifice of the Lord who passed over the house of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians and delivered our household. So the people bowed their heads and worshipped. In a minute, we're going to partake of communion. Communion is just one way that we celebrate Passover. And we remember. See, I believe communion, when Jesus took the first communion, it was during the Seder, that's what they call it. Uh, it was the first Passover. And they were celebrating it. And they broke bread. And they broke, uh, broke bread and drank the wine. And that was there celebrating the Passover. But in that, Jesus comes out and says something. We'll talk about here in a minute about the bread and the wine. But it's a way for us to remember our Passover. Let me challenge you. You do not have to celebrate Passover just when Pastor Mike is up here preaching. Man, the Bible says, Jesus said, as often as you remember me, do this. You can be doing it in your home before dinner every night. Because every time you take a communion, you're representing, you're remembering what Jesus did for you. So do it often. Remember the sacrifice that was given for you to live out this life that you get to live today. Amen? So we want to remember. Another way that we can remember this, this sacrifice and the resurrection, watch this now, is to celebrate a Sabbath. Oh, I'm going to step on some toes. If you're new here, I just do this every once in a while. I'm going to get in your business. Some of y'all work too much. And maybe this thing that's going around right now is a way for you to stop and remember. The Bible says, man, to do a Sabbath. Matter of fact, in the book of Exodus, when the commands were given, the Ten Commandments, in Exodus chapter 20, verse 8, God says, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Well, some people say to me, well, Mike, you're, you're talking about the law. That's the Ten Commandments. We ain't got to do that no more. I said, okay. Do you still want to murder someone? Well, no. Well, why not? Well, because God says it's wrong. Well, in the same place where He said that was wrong, He also told us to have a Sabbath. And the Bible says in the New Testament that the Sabbath wasn't made for us. We were made for the Sabbath. The, the Sabbath was made for us, not we for the Sabbath. Mark Chapter uh, 2, verse 27 and 28. Watch this. And he said to them, this is Jesus, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. 
Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. What is he saying? He said, look, Sabbath isn't about keeping a rule. Sabbath was made for you so that you can enjoy the life that God has for you. A Sabbath doesn't mean you sit around the table singing Kumbaya. What it means is you enjoy the creation in which God created. You take some time off and you love your family. You take some time off and you raise your children. You take some time off and you go to the park and you play and you enjoy this world that God created for you and me. It doesn't mean you go out and get crazy and act weird, you know, don't act like a believer. But God gave you the Sabbath so you can find rest and honor Him. It is a way for us to remember. I want to challenge you. How will you remember the Lord and your family? Maybe you need to start keeping a Sabbath. Maybe you need to start taking communion in your family. Dads, let me challenge you. Lead your family in communion. You don't have to be a preacher to do it. Take some bread, break it, give it to your family. Say, hey, we're remembering Jesus' body. Get some grape juice or wine. Take a little bit, a little bit. Some of y'all need a little bit of wine. All right? And say, this is the blood of Christ. And we're remembering the blood of Christ that was shed for us. Do that every day. And watch your life change. Do a Sabbath every day. But I want to challenge you. How will you remember this crucifixion today in your homes every day? I'm going to give you three things and we're going to wrap it up. All right? Number one, I want to challenge you with this. Remember, I better get an amen on this one. Remember, God is in control. Thank you. I know sometimes we walk in fear, doubt, and unbelief because we don't think God knew this was going to happen. As if God woke up one morning and went, oh snap, I wasn't planning for this. <laughs> Did you know that God has never said, hey, I got a great idea. You know He's never said that? You know why God has never said that? Because He's God. And He knows the beginning from the end. He knows everything. He's the Alpha and the Omega. God never has never had, He has not woke up one morning and go, you know what I just thought of? He's never done that. Because He's thought of everything already. Everything is done, it's established. So remember, in your family, God is in control. You might not feel like it. You might be living in a house right now that's in total chaos. God is in control. He hasn't left you. He hasn't forsaken us. People say, oh, this is the curse of God. Really? doesn't match up to Scripture. But God is still in control. He's in control of your family. He's in, some of you have lost your job. God is still in control. Your source is not your job. It is not your job. That is not your source. Your source is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides for you. Come on. In Isaiah 14, 24, it says, The Lord of hosts has sworn, surely, as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. As I have purposed, so shall it stand. God isn't freaking out by COVID-19. He didn't freak out about the plague that the nation of Israel had to go through. And he ain't freaking out about COVID-19. He knows his plan. He has a plan. Trust in him. He's in control. How do we know that God, how do we remember God and, and honor God that He's in control? Well, one, here we go. I'm going to step on some feet. Remember, we do this by giving, by serving, and by loving. Those are the three areas that we struggle with the most. Those are the three areas when God, when we don't believe God is in control, we'll struggle in our finances, we'll struggle in loving and serving people. But if you understand that God is in control, then He's in control. Start giving, whatever you can. Give groceries, give your time. Give finances. Start serving those people around you, your neighborhood, your community. Begin to serve. Begin to reach out beyond and believe that God is in control. And then here's another one. Begin loving. Some of you guys love people who love you. That's great. But the Bible says, what credit is that to you? There's no credit in that. Love those that don't love you. Love those that just really get up under your skin. Love them. Love those that have offended you. Love those that have hurt you. And include your family member. Thank you. <laughs> Love them. Because when you're loving people, what you're saying is God is in control, I'm not. And I'm going to love despite what they do or what they don't do. We're going to love. Number two. Yeah, let me go to number two. Remember, so God is in control. And because He's in control, you need to remember this. God has a plan. 
God has a plan. He has a plan. There are three areas that we have plans or access to plans in our life. And you have these access. The first plan is your own plan. You have access to do whatever you want to do. You're free. You're in America. You can do whatever you want to do. You have your own plan. Somebody said, that's right. The second one is the enemy's plan. All right? You have access to his plan too. Because just as God calls people, so does the enemy. He calls people in too. And you get to pick. You get to pick. You can listen to your plan or you flick the enemy. Now, no one wants to admit, right? None of us want to admit that we're following the enemy's plan. Come on now. I ain't going to admit it. Sometimes we don't even want to admit that we're following our own plan. But we'll say, bless God, I'm following God's plan. Really? See, if God's in control, then God has a plan. So in the midst of everything we're going through right now, believe it that God has a plan. And it might be to bring someone that you know to Jesus Christ. We'll talk about that in our last point. Which plan do you follow? Which plan do you follow? In Isaiah 65, 8, or 55, 8, 9, that's what it says. My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For if the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than yours. What am I saying? God's plan far reaches what we can imagine. Matter of fact, one of my favorite passages of Scripture is in Ephesians 3.20. It says, Unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think of. God has a bigger plan than you have. And the only thing it takes is for you to willingly surrender and say, God, I want your plan in my life. I'm tired of doing my own plan. And maybe that's the time that you're at right now where you get to go and press into his presence and say, God, I want your plan for my family. I've been doing my own plan for lo too long. And maybe this is the time that's COVID-19. is a time that's an attention getter. To say, man, I want to do what God's will is for my life. I want to follow His plan. I want to be on His purpose. Amen? Thank you. The resurrection causes us to remember that from the beginning of time, God had a plan for His creation. Between Jew and Gentile, He brought us together. It wasn't just for the Jewish people. It was now for us. I want you to take the time this week, and I'm going to challenge you to discover His plan for your life. I don't know what that is, but He might have a bigger plan for you. Last week we talked about seeking God. This is a great opportunity to seek Him so you can find His plan. Trust that He has a better plan than you do. I know you think you got it all together. I know sometimes we think we're pretty fly people and we're pretty smart, right? But man, God knows everything. He knows the beginning and He knows the end. Trust His plan. And it's going to take you to have faith. Faith means that you trust God even when you can't see things happening. So some of you might be sick. You might have financial stuff. This is time that we press into God and we trust God that He has a bigger plan and a bigger purpose for our life. That takes faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for without the evidence of it being seen. It's going to take faith for you to trust that He's in control and that He has a plan. And finally, the last one. I'm preaching fast today. The last one, is, and this is the most important one if I, can, if I can get you to tie into this. The most important one is this, church is to remember the resurrection so that you'll share Him. That you'll share Jesus Christ. God has placed you in places that, are, that no one else can go to. You are there for divine purpose. It might be in your family. It might be on your job. It might be in a club. It might be something. God has placed you there, not so that you can just fill up time and space, but so that you can take the truth of this resurrection and share it with them. Share it with someone. Matthew 5, 14 through 16 says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who will pass or in the house. Verse 16, this is for you. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So we're going to believe that God's in control, that if He's in control, then He has a plan. And one of His part of His plan, which is one of the most important things of why Jesus had to stand and die on this cross and, and rise again, was not so that we can call, we go church and I'm a Christian, I'm in safe, it's so that we can go out and proclaim to the world that's in darkness that we know where the light is and that we have found the light. Every one of you here are a vessel of the Father, man, to let His light shine out. How are you doing on that? If you were to grade yourself your own level, how is your light shining? 
When you're around them, the world, people that don't know you, know Him, do you act like they do? Do you look like they do? You answer your own question. I'm not asking for hands to be raised. I want to challenge you. Do you look like the world or do you look like light? Because Jesus died on this thing, man, so that we can have life. That we can be reunited with our Heavenly Father that created you. He has purpose for your life. But not just you. All of those that are around you. It's that important. Oh, we got COVID-19. That's great. I got Jesus. And in this dark world right now where people are freaking out, we got light. And they're looking for it. They're looking for the light of the world. Amen? Amen. You hold the key to someone's life changing. I know sometimes we forget. I know sometimes life gets scary and life gets busy and we forget. We think, man, it's just about coming to church sometimes. Oh, I ain't read my Bible or I ain't done this. It's bigger than that. The enemy's number one weapon against you, man, is busyness. And that's why I think you should take a Sabbath so you can remember the whole Jesus and the resurrection. But not only that, but remember that there are people around you. We think sometimes because we go to church, we forget that not everybody knows, nor does everybody believe in Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, our Messiah. And I want to challenge you today. Who has God put in your life? He invites all who will come to come. And on this Resurrection Sunday, this is a great time that we get to come out of our home, stand in here, and remind ourselves that He invites everyone to come. Whether you agree with them politically, whether you agree with them sexually, whether you agree with them morally or spiritually or whatever, He invites all to come to this cross and to lay down their life. Finally, I want you to remember that the cross is for all of us and anyone who will call on Him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. As the band comes, it says, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled back to God. For He made Him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. God doesn't look at you as a sinner. God looks at you as righteous. But I don't feel like it. Doesn't matter what you feel like. It's what the Bible says you are because of Jesus. And He calls all to come. And He tells you that have already came to this thing to get up and move out and go tell somebody about a risen King and about the light. Because here's the bottom line. Here's the bottom line. We're going to take communion. So we need you to be by your cars. The guys are going to come and they're going to pass out communion during this last song. And what we're going to do is remember that the cross has the final word. In everything in your life, above COVID-19, the cross has the final word. Against, the, against your job loss or your sickness or your problems in your family, the cross has the final word. What is it in your life right now that you need to remember the cross has the final word? As we get ready to take communion, we're going to take it together. So just hang on to it. When they're done playing, I'm going to come up here with Robin and we'll partake of the communion together and then we'll be dismissed. Okay? So let's worship this last song. You guys ready? We're going to worship the cross has the final word. Go ahead. The cross has the final word.